takes us to our food line and starting lineups tonight. Buddy Bayheim's second start against an ACC opponent. I'd say it worked out pretty good last night, Dan. <laughs> and oh, by the way, number one, the Sporting News National Player of the Year. He's back in the lineup for the Blue Devils. And here is the 6'8", 285-pound freshman from Spartanburg. So Zion Williamson's back on the floor. And with Dan Bonner, West Durham, you'll meet Brian Oliver here in just a moment. One would think, though, the zone and Duke's appeared weakness shooting perimeter ball. This could be interesting here. Well, it could be interesting, but I think the key tonight is Syracuse has to score points. Right. they got to put points on the board. They've struggled to score at times this year. That game against Duke was 95-91. to 91. That right. wasn't a coincidence. You're not going to beat Duke 62-61. to 61. So, as silly as it sounds, Syracuse has to score and score a lot to make this a game. All right, B.O., let's check in with you before we get started. Wes, after such a long debate of whether Zion Weaver should play or shouldn't play, yes, he's finally here. What I'm looking for today is for that long layoff, how is that going to affect his endurance? And much more, does he bring that same energy that he once brought to this Duke, Duke ball club? All right, Brian, thanks. Well, here's the way you look at it. If you follow social media at all, you may have seen the clip of Williamson coming off the floor last Saturday night in Chapel Hill after a disappointing loss to end the regular season for the Blue Devils to Carolina. If the looks told the story that night, He's coming back at full tilt, Dan. I don't think he's the kind of player that can come back halfway. Well, and I agree with you 100%. And he's, uh, his, the enthusiasm that he shows for the game, that's not feigned, that's not an act, and that, that's just who he is. And so and I think that's great because if you try to come back and you try to go halfway, that's when you get hurt again. So he's going to come back. He's going to go all out. I've, I don't share Brian's concern about his stamina. I think he'll be all fired up. <laughs> The hard thing might be three games in three days. Jim Beheim, 946 wins. His, his alma mater now in season 43. And, of course, Mike Krzyzewski, 72 years of age, now in campaign number 39 in Durham. And 1,100 career wins. And you see the 62 and 23 mark against the ACC. And away we go, Ron Gruber, Brian Dorsey, Bill Cummington Jr. on the whistle for us. Syracuse's store, of course, starts in the zone, and immediately Duke tries to go inside. And they roll to the deck, Howard, and a hell ball with Javin Delorier. Remember now, while Williamson has returned, Marquise Bolden is on the bench tonight for the Blue Devils. And that's where they're trying to go, inside to Zion Williamson. But remember, this Syracuse zone defense is very active. They do a great job stealing the ball. On the season, Wes, they have forced 105 more turnovers than their opponents. And there's a look at Bolden, the 6'11 junior from DeSoto, Texas, who only got three minutes last Saturday night in Chapel Hill before a knee injury took him out of the lineup for the remainder of that game and certainly in this ACC tournament. There is hope he could come back next week for the NCAAs. That's not a lot of questions about the Duke defense without Zion Williamson. Let's see if it's better with Zion Williamson. Frank Howard a three. That's the way Howard started the game yesterday and I think that's a great sign for Syracuse. Howard scored 20 including making four threes and he's got to have that kind of offensive performance tonight. Cam Reddish at the front against Howard. Tried to go to the foul line area, and again, Syracuse, who did a nice job deflecting passes that Pittsburgh had last night against that zone, is right there. Well, they do a nice job deflecting passes all the time. That's what the zone does. Behind. Reset. Quickly Howard. They slip it in to Hughes. Lob. Chuku offline. Couldn't control it. Juku could score in there, Wes, but you've got to make it easy for him. You can't expect him to make spectacular plays reaching behind his head. Williamson on the back line of the zone. Trey Jones, here's Reddish. Inside Zion to the basket. His first points at the ACC tournament for the field goal percentage leader in conference play at 68%. Well, not only was that power, Wes, that was tremendous quickness. Juku couldn't gather himself to even try to block the shot. Orange by a point. Almost two minutes gone in this first half. Winner gets Carolina tomorrow night in the second semifinal. Virginia, Florida State get us started tomorrow night here from Charlotte. Here's Buddy Bayhine. Tried to go to Howard, stolen, and engine one. 
one. <laughs> well, that's what everybody's waiting to see. How good is he stealing the ball, Wes? Unbelievable. Fifth in conference play. And second overall at better than two and a quarter a game. Bayham had it banged away. Trey Jones ahead for Barrett. Fouled by Chukwu. Well, Williamson's already impacted the ball game for the Blue Devils. Well, he just does such a great job. He catches the ball in the post, doesn't give anybody any time to come over and help out. And then, of course, once he gets going this way, the question is just how spectacular would it be? It's pretty good. Yeah, not bad. R.J. Barrett to the free throw line, 66% on the year. Free throw is good. The Blue Devils, by the way, under 69 as a team. And look at this. The only player in the NCAA averaging better than 20 points a game and hitting better than 65% from the floor. And that's why your Sporting News is National Player of the Year. And you're a candidate for every, every other National yep. Player of the Year there is. Well, they don't name one. You're not listed as a favorite. 6-3. Live, Chukwu the catch and flush. Nice find by Franklin Howard. And that's where you need to put it for Chukwu. If you're going to do the lob pass, he can certainly execute it, but it's got to be a good pass. That one was. Reddish spots for three. Williamson in between Hughes and Chukwu. who they get? Draws the foul. Oh, they got Chukwu. That's bad. Yep, second on Chukwu. And here's Chukwu. He catches the ball on a perfect pass and knocks it down. And Chukwu provides some inside scoring if you can get him close enough to the basket. Jim Beheim desperately trying to get somebody in the game for Chukwu. And it's O'Shea Brissett. And Jim Beheim not happy at all with the second whistle on Pascal Chukwu. Well, that's early. That's three minutes into the game. Chukwu's already out. Williamson. Now they're going to get Dolezal. And Merrick. Dolezal. He's just trying to get around Zion Williamson. I don't know how you do that. You start by setting up caution cones. <laughs> <laughs> One point lead for Duke. And Baseline inbounds for Jones. Williamson to the catch and then had it slapped out. And here's Howard trying to get an advantage for the Orange. It pushes it up and in. Frank Howard has five of the Orange's seven. Now I'm telling you, Syracuse has a tough time scoring sometimes in the half court, but when they can get out and go, they are very good in transition. Frank Howard is a nice finisher inside. Lob is over the intended reach of Javin Delorier. And so far, Duke has been fairly inefficient against this zone. And here is Jack White for Zion Williamson. So the ACC player and rookie of the year gets about three minutes and 28 seconds before he gets his first break. And the freshman Williamson out, the junior from Trelegon in Victoria, Australia. Duke's onto the floor. Three turnovers in the first seven possessions. Syracuse really needs to take advantage of that. Delorier knocked it away from Howard, but Brissett now with five to shoot. Scoop and score for O'Shea Brissett. Nice move, Dan, by the sophomore. O'Shea Brissett is an outstanding offensive player, but he's much better, Wes, when he's driving the ball to the basket. Brissett sometimes gets to standing around settling for threes, but when he drives to the basket, he's quick, he's big, he's strong, and he can finish inside. That's an excellent play. First basket for Brissett, who went through the ACC play, averaging just under 12 a game, but led the Orange in rebounds. But missed the free throw. Now, Brissett just has to play hard every second that he's on the floor. He's got to be active and be hard to guard. When you just stand around, it's easy to guard. You. Jones for Barrett. Here's Reddish. Catch and shoot off the mark and the rebound, Dolezal. But it's well documented. Duke is not a very strong three-point shooting team. They can make threes. They can get hot during the course of a game. But 
averages out there on the season, they shoot under 31%. Tell that to the Virginia Cavaliers. I'm about to say. <laughs> they went to Charlottesville, looked like Golden State. Reddish on the drive. Tried to collect the offensive rebound and another whistle and a foul. Three point lead for the Orange, but already Zion Williamson has impacted the ACC tournament. We're back to Charlotte right after this. And Syracuse leads number five, Duke 9 6 with Dan Bonner, Brian Oliver. Our Ortho Carolina U Improved Player Spotlight. It's more of a team look here, Dan. When the Blue Devils are healthy, 20 and 1, and shooting the ball 6% better than when they have one or four injured players in the lineup. Well, Wes, I think that that's a stat that can apply to a lot of teams. There's just nobody in college basketball has a big enough margin for error that can lose one or more of your starters and continue to act like nothing has happened. Well, Cam Reddish is going to be at the free throw line as Zion Williams has returned to the lineup after missing five ball games with the knee injury. But the concern for the Orange, the three point lead, and Marek Dolajai and Pascal Chukwu have two fouls apiece. Wes, and the other thing we're talking about, Zion, those are the guys with the fouls, but sitting right next to them is a guy who's not playing at all, and that's uh, Tyus Battle. So. Talking about being missing starters, where there's Tyus Battle, he's not able to go at all. So Zion Williamson is back for Syracuse, but Tyus Battle, or for Duke, but Tyus Battle remains out for Syracuse. Barama City Bay has come into the ball game now for the Orange to replace Dolezal. Buddy Beheim, who had a career high 20 last night. Mike Howard's got five of the Orange's first nine. There's Beheim with White trailing. In the traffic, fall away on the first shot of the night, no good. But Hughes, what an outstanding ball game in Cameron, gives Syracuse a second chance. And Mayheim had it rattle out. And here's Trey Jones, and off to the races go Duke with the freshman Jones. And that is rejected by Hughes. This is a block shot. Well, Hughes just keeps hustling. He's running from behind, comes flying into your picture. That was really a good job by Frank Howard to hold up Jones to give somebody a chance to come and help him, and that's a lot of help. So the rejection by Hughes gets Jalen Carey into the lineup for the Orange for the first time. Williamson returns, and we see Alex O'Connell for the first time tonight. And a turnover by Duke, and here is Howard. Lost it on the way to the rack. Jones makes the save to Delorier. Two-point lead. For the Orange. Syracuse the sixth seed. Duke is the three seed here in Charlotte. And Duke trying to get organized against the zone. We think it's easier to attack the zone if you start earlier in the shot clock. Rebound Barrett offline. Jalen Carey came in last night, Dan. Played seven minutes and added a basket after not quite frankly seeing very much action at all. In the ACC campaign, averaged just six minutes a game when he did appear in conference. He's a guy who can really motor, so he adds an element of speed that Syracuse doesn't have without him. Carey into traffic, five to shoot. Howard, the rebound for R.J. Barrett. O'Connell, foul line area. Barrett over City Bank. Rebound, Williamson, stick back good. Six already for Zion. Now, when he gets the ball particularly close to the basket, there's very little you can do. Nine all with almost seven minutes gone. Brissett, block Delorier, CD Bay battling. Here's the outlet, O'Connell. Duke, of course, leads the NCAA in block shots, Wes. They're we'll a see. great shot blocking team, so it's really going to be hard to get the ball all the way to the basket against the Blue Devils. Barrett out front. Blue Devils in front on R.J. Barrett's first three. Now, and against the conference, Barrett a 32% three-point shooter, but he did make 40 of them. 
So he can shoot the three, just not a high percentage. He closed the regular season on a tear after a really outstanding campaign. Deloria is shaken up on the play. And we get a stop at your play on the whistle here, but back up a moment here. Well, Zion Williamson playing behind the zone, Wes, and nobody even looks to block him out. Reset gives him a glance and then just forgets about it at all. When Zion Williamson gets a run at the basket and gets the ball, it's hard to stop him. And R.J. Barrett, we said he's not a high percentage three-point shooter, but he can certainly make it. The foul was on O'Connell, the sophomore Roswell, Georgia. So, Marama Sidibe missed the front end, and Brian Cam Reddish has come back for Duke. Was one, was one of the things we talked about at the beginning about the endurance of Zion Williamson. He's been as explosive as I've seen him. But I see after a couple of times up and down, it seems like hands on his hips, pulling on those shorts. Interesting to see how that plays out for the rest of the first half. He got his first break about three and a half minutes in, been on the floor about 90 seconds. Look out. He didn't look tired to me on that one. <laughs> yeah, no problem with conditioning. There you go. He's jump okay. <laughs> 14 to 9. Hey, Wes, Dan, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> jump shot for Jalen Carey, the arch answers. <laughs> it's all right, you're still our rookie of the year, B.O. Williamson spots, hits. He's got 11. And he is five for five from the floor. Barrett almost took it away from Carey. Williamson scrambles. He was out of bounds as he pulled it away from Jalen Carey. Well, you worry about conditioning? Let's check on the conditioning. Uh, pretty good there. That was uh, left-handed, by the way. And oh, uh, by the way, the conditioning on the three, pretty solid. Back to Charlotte. Reddish, the longer player, forced the pass, and now a steal by Zion. And a run out, and a right-handed rack attack! Need eight minutes in. It's Williamson on the left for three. Oh, he's back. He's back in a big way, and he's already into double figures. Got to be a great experience. David Shoemate, the voice of the Blue Devils. Zion Williamson, 11. Dan Syracuse, 11. As we rejoin you, actually Duke has six more points to lead by six in our lending tree. Know your score as we check on today's tournament action here in Charlotte. Carolina's advanced to meet the winner of this one tomorrow night. Our first semifinal has Virginia, who was outstanding with Kyle Guy, but game two is still the best game of the day so far, Dan. Well, Florida State making a tough, tough three at the buzzer to tie the game and then win it in overtime and Virginia Tech just missing the opportunity to win it in overtime you were right now Zion Williamson we showed you he's five for five from the field 11 points four rebounds the rest of Duke is one for seven from the field six points and six rebounds Syracuse remember when West we said they had to keep scoring right they started four for four they're one for seven since that time Orange won the 20th of the year last night with the victory over Pittsburgh. Perry. And Wimson stolen by Williamson. Yep. Got deflected out of there. Brissett had a shot at it. Jones for Barrett. Uh -oh. Zion! Get that all over you. <laughs> Eight point lead. Nine gone. Deflected again. What an outlet pass. Barrett, layup good. Seven for R.J. Barrett. Williamson's got 13. Duke's defensive attack has really been impressive, Wes. They're extremely aggressive. Double team on the ball. Syracuse is just trying to hang on to the ball. They're not even thinking about trying to get it in the basket. Left side, Howard lost it on the way up. And Deloria saves it. Here's Reddish. Oh, bumped and fouled by Carey. Jalen Carey's first, fifth on the orange. Free throws coming for the Pennsylvania Cam Reddish. Well, Duke just really scrambled. What a tip here. And then what a pass. Tip, pass, finish. 
Now to put that one in the playbook. Great camera work from our director, Billy McCoy, and our wonderful Raycom Sports crew. Capturing all the angles of these highlights. Well, Syracuse the has to get here. themselves reorganized here, Wes. Might be hard, man. Well, I, I didn't say it was going to be easy. <laughs> Reddish, three ball. Williamson crashes the glass, scores, and draws the foul. And if they got Chukwu again, that's three. 15 for Williamson. That's exactly who they got. Third on Chukwu, six on the orange, and watch this. Well, just nobody gets anywhere close to Zion Williamson. They allow him to just run to the basket. Now, I'm not saying that I would want to get close to Zion Williamson, but you got to try to block him out. He's just had a free run every time to the basket. When he gets close, he's getting the ball. Tell you the other thing, Dan and Brian, it's been a long time in the college game that we've seen a guy play with the kind of passion and enthusiasm for the sport that this guy has. That much talent and having that much fun. You're right, Wes. It's, it's something you don't often see. Nope. Buddy Bayham in the orange trail by 12 after the Barrett Williamson barrage here in the last couple of minutes. And now Dolajai, and he hit the out of bounds stripe across the way. It will go to do Brian I mean I don't know how it's just the fourth time I've seen Williamson live and each time the passion and the enthusiasm just bubbles over well Wes, this is my first time seeing him live and his athleticism is there's no word for it because his first jump is amazing but his second jump and with the power I'm, I'm, I'm speechless Wes uh -oh. I'm speechless and there's a foul and that's Cedar Bay picking up his first Seventh on the orange, Dan, in the first half with 9.38 to go. Just got a little longer with Duke now at the free throw line. And here is Williamson, who's already got 15. Dan, my question to you is, can you remember the last time you've seen a guy with that size and that power, and every time he's close to the rim, is, is a highlight reel? Well, I really don't. The only guy that I can think of with that combination of size and power who just looked bigger and better than everybody else out on the court was Spencer Haywood when wow. he played at Detroit. Yeah. I'm going to go not so far back. I remember Rodney Rogers at Wake Forest. Yeah. Okay, that's a good one. Yeah. And for me, I thought he was closer to comparable to Rock to uh, Zion, but I still don't believe that he's even close to. There's a ball thrown length of the floor to Jones and a kick. That will keep it at the Blue Devil end here with 9.27 to play. The problem for Syracuse is they cannot get any ball movement at all. The Duke defense has been swarming. Syracuse has been forced to become nothing but dribblers, and you can't work that way, particularly without Tyus Battle. Battle is a guy who don't get his own shot, but he's sitting over on the bench because he's injured. Jack White out of the corner. Howard and the orange. Trying to find a little offensive punch right. here. You have to move the ball. You got to move players. You have to move the ball. The Duke defense has been dominant. But see, not a lot of movement by the Syracuse players. Hughes lines up a deep three. Okay. Elijah Hughes now, his first points. Nobody needs to move. And Mike Krzyzewski just sat there while Hughes shot the ball right in front of him. That was deep. Yes, it was. Reddish, baseline, offensive foul on Cam Reddish. First on Reddish, third. On Duke in this first half. And Sidibe, he's in there because of foul trouble, but he does a nice job. He gets over, gets himself established, actually jumps in the air, Wes, but he's allowed to do that as long as he goes straight up. Dolashai, long bounce pass into Behan. Well, the, the defensive pressure has been intense. Trey Jones, all defensive team. 13 to shoot, Howard. Deflected Barrett, and he's off and running. And the layup good, and Elijah Hughes went over the photographers well in the end zone and into the cheerleaders. You can't fault the hustle of Hughes. He just wasn't able to catch up. Barrett, by the way, has nine. Williamson has 15. 
The only other point belongs to Reddish. And Jordan Goldwire's come in for Duke to replace Trey Jones. Syracuse cannot get a shot. Yeah, the defensive pressure that Duke's applying has been impressive. In addition to what they've done at the iron, right? <laughs> Hughes with 12 to shoot, picked up on his dribble. Here's Bayhound. But again, it's all dribbling. There's very little player movement. The ball doesn't move. Then Duke can guard one on one. Howard. And the rebound, Deloria. Now, Mike Krzyzewski tells Jordan Goldwire, let's slow this down a second. So the Blue Devil supplies their Hall of Fame head coach. Ten to shoot, O'Connell. And White couldn't track it down. That'll get us to a break. Well, Zion Williamson in his first New York Life ACC tournament game has stolen the show. Williamson's got 15. And Williamson's done everything, even impress Jim Beheim. You know why Duke's up top? Those guys. <laughs> All but one of their points here in the ball game between Barrett and Williamson. Right down at the bottom, they're the highest scoring tandem in the country this season. That's really impressive. And Duke's defense is very impressive. West Syracuse has six field goals in the game. Duke already has eight steals. Wow. Syracuse has turned it over five times in their last eight, last eight possessions. They've had the ball 22 times and they've turned it over nine. Elijah Hughes had a deep three a moment ago. Going to draw the foul on Barrett right around the foul line area. Second foul on Rowan Barrett Jr., whose dad played at St. John's in the mid 90s. And RJ's the godson of the NBA Basketball Hall of Famer Steve Nash. Here's Elijah Hughes at the line, 74% on the season. Now, a message from Coca Cola. Orange Vanilla Coke, you got the green light. Hughes coming off 18 last night. And has four here in the first half. There's O'Connell with Carey. Toward the front of the zone with Frank Howard. I mean, Syracuse has been able to set the zone. They've been okay. The problem is they haven't been able to set the zone. O'Connell three. Alex O'Connell, who had 20 at the Carrier Dome in the 10-point Blue Devil win, gets his first point to the tournament. Well, he is the one guy on the Blue Devils team, Wes, that you can consider a high percentage three-point shooter. That's what he does. His job is to come in and make threes. Howard with 13 to shoot. A little jab step to try and free himself. Now Carey and Williamson the rebound. Carey's not a great jump shooter. His game is driving the ball to the basket, particularly in transition. And Williamson had it intercepted. You know, Duke has had now eight turnovers in the game. So again, when Syracuse can set the zone, they've been okay, but they keep throwing the ball away. Here's Jones. Reddish in transition, traveled with it. Shuffle of the feet from Cam Reddish. It's been a tough go at times for Reddish as a rookie in the ACC, Dan. Yeah, it has been. You know, you, the standard, obviously, that his two teammates have set is so high, but Reddish has had a great season, Russ. Ten averaging almost 15 against the league. That was 16th in conference rankings. 36% from the floor, 77% at the free throw line. He hasn't been a high percentage shooter, but he's been able to be productive nonetheless. Hughes, another three. This one out of the left corner. See the Offensive rebound for the orange. Carey to get in traffic and had it blocked. Combination of Delorier and Cameron. That's good defense. They didn't do anything except put their hands up and stand there. That's five and a half to go. Get a foul, I believe Hughes. 
trying to take Williamson offline on the lob. Well, Hughes knew he was back there. Williamson standing in the corner, and Hughes had that lower wing for the Syracuse defense. Hughes, left hand part of your screen. He knows Williamson's going to the basket, just moves underneath him. Don't, Zion, think, don't nope. think you need to, needed to do that. Williamson 0 for 3 at the line. And the free throw good. City Bay, I think, had a line on that ball. Hughes was just trying to knock Williamson off balance. Zion Williamson, who's born on YouTube at 15 years of age. <laughs> and I'm not kidding. He's now one of five at the line here in the first half. It's the IG, Dan. That's where it came to fruition. See, and when Syracuse gets a shot, they're rushing because the defense has been so good. O'Connell, offensive foul. Hughes outside the arc. Along the baseline, Alex O'Connell second. And now five on the Blue Devils here in the opening half. The Blue Devils continue to turn it over, Wes, and so they're leaving the door open here for Syracuse. Barnes is having a hard time taking advantage of it. Absolutely. Well, Syracuse is giving it right back. Yep. The difference is Syracuse doesn't have Zion Williamson, and Duke does. Jack White's back on the floor with Deloria, Jones, Reddish, and Williamson. Now for Coach Krzyzewski. There's a double team there, and Ron Groover will get Reddish on the foul. That's his second. So the six Duke fouls are divided two each to Barrett, Reddish, and O'Connell. And that's what Duke is doing on defense. When Syracuse sets one of those screens, they're just jumping the ball handler, and Syracuse has not really figured out how to deal with that. Howard. And the shot bounds away for White. Nice help defense by Delorio. Here's Williamson. In traffic, up strong, and another foul. On the arms, so that'll be nine. A couple of shots coming. Frank Howard's first. Ninth on Coach Bayheim's team, and the senior from Suitland, Maryland. Frank Howard, who had 18 last night against Pittsburgh. A couple of free throws for Williamson, who's one of five at the line. Road to the tournament brought to you by the Honda dealers of the Carolinas. Mike Krzyzewski's team three in the net has beaten Virginia twice. The Cavaliers only two losses of the year. Kentucky and Florida State. Dan is Duke a one tonight. Well, that's a very again. That's a very interesting question. We were talking about that with North Carolina. I certainly think that you have to make Duke a one seed if they win this tournament. Uh, I think maybe if they win tomorrow, if they get there, then they probably are a one seed. But as I say, I, I'm not one of those bracket guys. To my mind, it doesn't really make that much difference. You're going to go in the NCAA tournament. You're going to play good teams. Seven team foul is the first on Jack White. 425 to go and Cedar Bay will go to the line already 0 for 2 at the strike but everybody's all season long uh, you know, has been talking about Duke number one seed number sure. one seed and then Zion Williamson went out they dropped a couple of games and of course it still counts they lost the games whether Williamson is playing or not but if Williamson's back and they're winning games then I think probably they are number one seed Ties battle not on the floor for a second consecutive night after a back injury suffered late in the ball game at Clemson on Saturday. Listed as day to day last night. And now you start to wonder, Dan, if Battle can get to a point health wise where he'll be able to help Jim Beheim's team next week. Is there any question to get to this point of the year, Wes? And obviously you want to get in the tournament, you want to get as good a seed as you can possibly get but the other thing you have to be if you're going to be successful in the NCAA tournament is helping. Yep. Under four to go now in the first half. Duke's doubled up the orange. So far here at the Spectrum Center in front of a full house in Charlotte. Seed of A. Missed time to back into the lob. Look out. And here is Zion. He held it off and then flushed it with two hands. It's like he hung up in the air, Wes, and let everybody else fly by. That's pretty much it. Williamson. My goodness. 
What a half. 19 for Zion on his eighth field goal. By the way, he is perfect from the floor. Trey Jones teed him up. Yep, a couple of orange go flying by as Williamson sets it down. Time now for a Sling TV slinging it. Dan, guess who? <laughs> you know, the amazing thing, Wes, is he dunked so many of them. You think, wow, he's a great dunker. He is, but he can do so many more things. But, geez, this is amazing. Watch college hoops on Sling TV for only $25 a month at SlingTV.com. 32-15. Duke leads the orange with Dan Bonner, Brian Oliver, West Durham, and our wonderful Raycom sports crew. Just a real pleasure to be with all these men and women this week here at the Spectrum Center in Charlotte. First time the New York Life ACC tournament's been here in 11 years. Last time was 2008 where Duke was beaten by Clemson in the semifinals, and it took a Tyler Hansbro jump shot by Carolina to get Seth Greenberg and Virginia Tech excused in the semifinals. And Tell you what, we're setting ourselves up, Dan. If the Blue Devils win tonight for just the fourth time since 1995, that the four top seeds will be in the semifinals. My Duke looking pretty good right at the moment. Howard with one on the clock. Pushed it up and in. Seventh for Frank Howard. That is only the seventh field goal by Syracuse in this game. They have 11 turnovers and seven field goals, and Duke already has 10 steals. White, Reddish. Delaria couldn't handle it. By the way, you said Syracuse now after the Howard bucket, 7 of 20. Williamson's 8 of 8. Zion Williamson, Wes, just made a tremendous pass from the middle of the zone to a wide open Jack White. And White passed up the shot, dribbled in, and eventually Duke lost the ball. And Zion Williams went over to him and said, hey, shoot the ball. I think when Zion Williamson told me to do something, I would do it. <laughs> Whether it was basketball or anything else? Absolutely. Yeah. Howard out front, three is good. Ten for Frank Howard. And that's half their points. Now they gotta dig in. That's it's there's still two minutes left in the first half. They've actually played pretty well in the set defense. Jones tried to answer. White had a shot at it. Williamson collects the deflection and scores on the scoop. Nine for nine is Williamson. And he's got 21 in the first half. He's got more points than Syracuse. Yes, he does. Howard, spot up on Jones. Oh, Frank Howard, nice. But well, he's the only offense they have. I talked earlier in the game about how I thought it was really important that O'Shea Brissett get involved in the offense, and he has been very quiet. Had that one spectacular drive, but that's really all we've heard from him. Williamson, by the way, had 21 against Army in the first half this year, so this effort here in his first ACC tournament game equals his best first half of the year, and Frank Howard has caught fire, and Mike Krzyzewski wants a timeout. West for as spectacular as Zion Williamson has been and for all that has gone wrong for Syracuse so far in this half, they just cut the lead to nine points. And, you know, we're talking about Zion Williamson, and rightfully so because he's been spectacular, but Frank Howard's been pretty good as well. Knocking down a couple of long jump shots. Nice block by Brissett, and here Syracuse gets out and run, and remember, they are very good in transition. Frank Howard, an excellent shooter. Boy, the last four possessions have been all Frank Howard against Duke. It's been all Frank Howard, but because Duke has turned the ball over or taken tough shots against the Syracuse zone, Syracuse has been able to push the ball up, and Howard has been able to get opportunities in transition. I think the more transition that they can get, the better. Nine-point game after the barrage from Howard, Dan. We just need a basket here, don't you think? 
Barrett will give it a whirl. And we're set the rebound. Here's Howard now. Buddy Behan. This is, where, set. this is where Syracuse has struggled against the set Duke defense. Howard. Or Jones almost Ooh. swiped it. Behan spots and hits. Okay. Buddy Beheim off a career high 20 last night. Scratches for the first time. Six point game, final half minute. Orange on a tear, a 13 to 2 run here. And it's no coincidence, the run coincides with the fact that they've stopped turning the ball over. Seven to shoot, here's Barrett. Back for Jones for three. Off the mark. Rebound Beheim. One second for set. And the horn sounds, but a run by the Orange. Cuts it down to a six-point game, Dan, here going to the locker room. Well, when you don't turn the ball over and you get some shot opportunities and they go in, then suddenly the game looks a lot different. And Buddy Beheim, I think he surprised White. White thought he was a little too far from the basket to attempt that shot. And Beheim squeezed it off quickly and knocked it down. You know, Wes, if you only score 28 points in the half and you're within six of this Duke team with an explosive offensively as they are, you got to consider yourself very fortunate. And there the defense produces a steal. So Frank Howard, the senior, who led them to 15 points, a lob, Chuku couldn't finish it. And there's a Blue Devil foul on Javin Deloria. Junior from Shipman, Virginia, his first, number one of the half on Mike Krzyzewski's team. Pascal Chukwu. 61%. And six blocks last night, which was his ninth game of the year with three or more blocks in a game. Free throw good? No. Look at our first half stats. You mentioned the 3 of 12 shooting. Well, the biggest problem for both teams was turnovers. No question about it. And Syracuse, of course, didn't do themselves any favors at the free throw line. Two cool ball, one of two. He has two, three. Two for eight are the orange. And they're, they're the kind of opportunities you can't let slip by in a game like this. Good by five. And of course, Bayhams team in that zone. Trey Jones slashing in. Jones was 0 for 5 shooting in the first half. There's a block. Yep, Reddish had it partially blocked by Hughes. Deflected and recovered Bayheim. Howard. Reset. Three blocked by Williamson. Barrett trying to get to the basket. Blocked in traffic. Buddy Bayheim last touched by Syracuse. Go back to the orange end of the floor, Dan. Well, Zion Williamson just, uh, he waits till RJ Barrett, until Brissett is committed to shooting the ball, then he goes and gets it. Cam Reddish the three. First field goal of the ball game for the rookie from Norristown, PA. Well, he had missed his first three three-point attempts, and obviously the three is a big X factor for the Duke Blue Devils. Hughes. Working against Williamson. Now Brissett rolls to the basket and scores. O'Shea Brissett with four points on his second field goal. He now has as many field goal attempts in this half as he did in the entire first half. He's got to get himself involved. Jones out front, Reddish. Back to Barrett and... Well, they got Chukwu against four on Chukwu. Brian Dorsey the whistle, Jim Beheim not a fan. On the fourth against Chukwu with 18-16 to play. Chukwu keeps his hands up, no question about that, but he certainly hits him with his hips. And that's a, like, that's a big man trick. You put your hands up and you hit the guy with your lower body and say, wait a minute, I had my hands up. Free throw by R.J. Barrett, good. He now into double figures. 
on his third free throw. But this is a Duke team that's going to score points. You can play defense as well as you want, but this is a Duke team that has enough firepower. They are going to score points to hang in the game. You've got to be able to score as well. Howard. Here's Buddy Beheim, who had the three-pointer late in the first half. See if he can build on that for his father's club. Howard, catch and shoot. And Barrett the rebound. Off to Williamson. Back for Jones. And Chuku battled Delorier and last touched by the Orange is what Bill Covington Jr. helped Brian Dorsey with. And with that, here's Mark Dolajai to replace Pascal Chuku. This tough night for Chiku. Every time he turned around, he got a foul. Didn't play very many minutes at all. Nope. In the first half, in fact, he only got about three minutes on the floor. And not many more here at the start of the second half. That was a kick, so deflected out of bounds. It will. And Chuku, it, it's hard to. To describe how important he was last night when he had nine rebounds and seven points and six blocks. It's a different Syracuse team when they can get production from him inside. Brian Dorsey says it last touched the Blue Devils as Howard battled Barrett there in the corner. But for a guy like Chuku, it's hard against Duke because Duke is attacking you inside all the time. Yep. And not just with the dribble, Wes, but they go to the boards and they really make life miserable for big guys. He's already got two turnovers in five second half possessions here. And the Duke turnovers have allowed Syracuse to stay in this game. Reddish got knocked to the deck, almost picked it off. Dolaja working against Delorier, shot fake, and Mark Dolaja rolls in his first points. That was, that was a tough play. Syracuse Bayheim, but, you know, really had a tough time hanging on to the ball, but survived that and got it to Dolaja. Barrett missed everything and a pushing foul on Hughes as Javin Deloria was looking for a position. So Elijah Hughes draws his second to transfer from East Carolina from Beacon, New York. And the second of the half on the arm. And here comes Jack White for Zion Williams. Wes Williamson played almost 17 minutes in that first half. And, it, and just like he did in the first half, a three-minute run and now a break. Yeah, and then he didn't come out of the game after he went back in, I don't think. That's right. I, maybe briefly. But yeah, maybe for a couple of seconds, but, but not for it. very long. Nope, you're right. The official stats he has him playing 16 minutes and 52 seconds in the first <laughs> half. That'd be about right. And there's Trey Jones slipping in. First field goal for Jones. And that's the first time Jones has really ventured down into the lane to get that mid-range jump shot. Well, it will stay with the Orange, who trailed by seven. And the principal presents our second half game plan. Well, you heard Jim Beheim tell Brian Oliver that uh, they had to create some opportunities in transition. They've got to create some open shots, and then they've got to make them. And then Duke needs a little bit more from their guys other than Barrett and Williamson. Going to see Trey Jones score in this half, so that's a good start. Bounce pass, Dolezal, skip out for Beheim. Howard with 13 to shoot, pull up on Barron. Oh, nicely done. I thought Frank Howard waited too long on that, but he measured Barrett very well off the dribble. 17 for Howard, following 18 last night against Pittsburgh, and an offensive foul on Barrett. His third, second on the Blue Devils. Well, Frank Howard, the senior, is kind of carrying the orange here tonight, Dan, and keeping them within range. Well, he is, and somebody's got to carry him, and because Tyus Battle, again, isn't playing tonight. You CD. look for some help from Hughes and from Brissett. A pleasant surprise for Beheim for a guy who kind of struggled from a scoring perspective most of this season. Dolajai inside, fell off the rim. 
And White the rebound. Dolajai is a very effective player. He's a passer, he's a rebounder, he's a defender. He's just not a shot maker. You'd hope a guy his size could make one that close to the basket, but that's a tough play. Another turnover by Duke. Unforced error on the Blue Devils, who've had some problems ball handling here in half two. And Frank Howard trying to keep the orange as 17. Duke lead is five when we come back to Charlotte. Welcome back. Thursday night in Uptown Charlotte, the quarterfinals of the New York Life ACC Tournament at Spectrum Center. We're a sellout house of better than 19,000 looking on as Duke leads Syracuse 40 to 35, but the senior for the Orange, Frank Howard, has been keeping them close. Well, Frank Howard so far has Syracuse on his back and he's carrying him. He's got 17 points. He's made seven field goals, West. The next highest total on the Syracuse team is two. He's got 17 points. The most anybody else has is four. And the D Syracuse defense has forced 15 turnovers. That's another reason why they're hanging around in the game when they've struggled a little bit, with the exception of Frank Howard offensively. Almost five minutes gone, second half. And the Orange find themselves three of six on the floor here in the second half. Duke just two of five, and Hughes, boy, nice play, Reddish. It looked like Elijah Hughes had all the leverage in the world going to the basket. Wes, Reddish got lucky that time. And, you know, on the defense, they call that Matador defense. He waved at the ball as they went by, but he actually got his hand on it. Howard off the quick bounce pass. Reset crashes and will draw the foul. And it's on. Cam Reddish. It's his third. And it's the third of the second half on the Blue Devils. Wes, that is a great rebound inside by Brissett. Roche Brissett 0 for 1 tonight at the line, now making 1 for 2. Dan, the thing that catches your eye about Beheim and his team, they got rocked with haymakers in the first half from Duke, really at both ends of the floor. And yet, oh, no question. Use that run at the end of the first half to, you know, kind of get their balance. There's Buddy Beheim driving to the basket. Last touch by Duke. It'll stay with the Orange. Wes, you make a great point. Everything was going against Jim Beheim's guys. Zion Williamson was putting on a show, and yet somehow they hung around. Yeah. Their defense forced turnovers, and eventually the ball started going in the basket. Here's Brissett from Howard, and Howard has been spectacular. Dolajai. Oh, there's a mismatch here. Can Brissett take advantage? The answer, yes. Five and a half, seven in the game for O'Shea Brissett. And isn't this interesting all of a sudden? Has Zion Williamson touched the ball on the offensive end in this half? Does not have a point in five and a half minutes. Okay. Until now. He did. Did just now. And he's perfect from the floor. Ten for ten. Howard all the way to the basket. Well, 19 Howard's, for Howard. Howard's not 10 for 10, but he's been pretty doggone good. Almost six minutes gone. Here is Reddish. All the way through. O'Connell, that's a two. Williamson follows softly with the left hand. Williamson just does such a great job establishing position inside against that zone. Answer at the other end. Buddy Behan. It's a one-point game. West, with the way this game started, you'd have never guessed that this could happen. You're right about that. Reddish back for Jones. Long rebound right to Trey Jones. Reddish had it slapped away, and a foul will be called. And free throws for Reddish. I think they called it on the pass, Wes. You're right. Percent the whistle. His first third on the arch. This is just a great lob pass because Hughes simply isn't big enough over on the back side of that zone to contend with Zion Williamson and Beheim when he's been open. He's been deadly in this turn. How about the catch by Barrett? And he got it up on the glass for his fourth field goal. 12 for R.J. Barrett. That's tremendous strength by Barrett. He had goals I wrapped all over him. Almost seven minutes gone here in the second half. 
Behind knocks it down. We're tied at 46. Last time they were tied was nine all. Lob again and a foul. That's Brissett, I believe. Well, we talked about Syracuse having to make open shots, and Buddy Beheim just working without the ball. Not really much of a screen there, but O'Connell them do a really good job getting around Dolajai, and that gives Beheim just enough room. Goldwire, the sophomore from Norcross, Georgia, played briefly in the first half. Back out there now to replace O'Connell. Barrett the catch off a nice bounce pass. Five and a half. 14 for R.J. Barrett in the ballgame. Really good recognition by Duke that moved Hughes from the side where Williamson is against that zone to the side where Barrett is, and so they went to Barrett. Hughes isn't big enough to guard either one of those guys close to the basket. Rehans had the hot hand. A couple of threes already here in half two. They need to put the ball in Brissett's hand and let him go to work. Does against Barrett, and he will draw the foul from Reddish. And that is four on Cam Reddish. And four on Mike Krzyzewski's team here in half two. O'Shea Brissett is a skilled offensive player, Wes, and I'm just not sure that anybody, maybe except Williamson, is going to be able to handle him one-on-one -on -one inside. And Reddish came over to help a little bit too late, though, a little bit too aggressively. However, Brissett still struggling from the free throw line. Reddish will come out, Delorier reports for the Blue Devils. Brissett, the sophomore, Mississauga, Ontario. Same hometown as R.J. Barrett. And O'Shea gets one of the two. And the Orange now only four for 12 from the line. That's a killer in a close game. They were 12 of 19 at the Carrier Dome, 14 of 19 at Cameron at the strike in the two regular season games. Jones a runner with the right hand. Pretty shot by Trey Jones, Dan. He's much better going to the basket than he is standing outside shooting threes. Yep. Agree there. Brissett, Brissett trying to work. Oh, nice spin move, and then the block, Delorier. Well, he had to get by Williamson, he had to get by Jones, and then Delorier was waiting for him. Nice defense, nice team defense by the Duke Blue Devils. Out front, goal wire. Williamson thought about the three. Now Barrett. Goal wire for RJ's triple. And deflected out. Barrett and a new shot clock, but Jones slips it. Delorier blocked by Brissett, and that's his third all here in the second half. Well, Jim Beheim and his team going to talk it over. Three-point lead for the Blue Devils. Meanwhile, young Buddy Beheim has come in, banked home a couple of threes. Trey Jones has pushed the Blue Devil lead to three. Jamin Delorier at the line. Brian, what'd you learn from Coach Beheim's huddle? Jim Beheim is telling his team, West that they've got to put a body on Zion. He's getting a lot of uncontested touches around the rim. They've got to be able to get the rebound. He said that they're doing good on their offense, but they can't give them just second-chance opportunities. I might add an S to that, man. <laughs> well, that's easier said than done. Duke, though, they have done a land office business on the offensive boards. They've got 12 offensive rebounds, 13 second-chance points. That has been, so far, one of the decisive factors in this game. And we're to one of those points where Duke's starting to get a little bit of a working margin. Syracuse really needs a basket. Knocked away goal wire. Beheim chased it into the backcourt. Williamson came out of the fray with it. Of course he did. And Barry sneaks to the basket. And Brissett the rebound. And now you go. Here's Howard for Beheim. Pull up three. Brissett tried to flush it back. And a foul called on the Blue Devils. And it's on Williamson. End-to-end -end action here in half two. 
Well, this is some sequence here where Brissett does a great job with the rebound. Syracuse pushes the ball up the court. You take that three. It was contested, though, and Brissett and Dolezal were the guys by the boards. O'Shea Brissett, two of four. That's three what Jim Beheim talked ball. about, West. They had to get out in transition. Uh, Duke did a nice job getting back and contesting that three. Pascal Chukwu, he's got those four fouls. He's forced to watch. By the way, Zion Williamson's got his 20, his 11th double double of the year, Dan, with 25 points and 11 rebounds. And six of those rebounds are offensive rebounds. Right. And five steals. Three point game. Jones a three. <laughs> Dolezal did a good job, but then it got deflected. Goal wire and one. Jordan goal wire. Just his seventh field goal of the year. And that's a mistake by Frank Howard. You come out with that rebound. You don't put the ball down in traffic like that. You either pass it out for an outlet pass, or you wait till the traffic clears, and then you start to dribble. Three points for goal wire. Fouls on Dolajai. Boy, that is a huge turnaround right there. Syracuse had the ball. Instead, they give it right back, and Duke gets a three-point play. Jones commits the foul. He and Williamson were trying to collect on the double team. And the seventh against the Blue Devils. Well, and that means that Syracuse will be going to the line for the rest of the ball game. These are these are two of the polar free throw shooting teams, Dan. In conference play, the Orange 67 percent, Duke a little better at 70.2, but they're both in the bottom five. Well, Frank Howard, one of the better free throw That's shooters. Right. These are his first of the night. Five and a half, 20 in the game, make it 21 as he hits that. One. Well, Syracuse has to dig in defensively. They have done a nice job at times getting that initial stop, but they've had a hard time claiming the defensive rebounds, particularly when Williamson's been involved. Jones, foul on Williamson. Runs it up and in. He's still perfect from the floor. Still had not missed a shot from the floor, nope. Wes. That's amazing. And that was not an easy shot right there. 27 now for Zion, six in the second half. Back to a six-point Blue Devil advantage. Here's Hughes, and slapped off the glass. Barrett on the run. I think the pull-up jumper in the lane is the answer there. These guys, it's just very hard to get the ball all the way to the basket against them. Barrett for three. Hello. 17 now for Barrett. The lead nine very quickly here for Duke. Uh, Zion Williamson comes through that lane, and he's so big and strong. Syracuse has nobody to match with him, and then he just waits for you. He sees the guy driving the lane and just swats it away. Fouls on Jordan Goldwire. And Duke, a very low three-point shooting percentage today, but they've made some important baskets, some important three-point baskets in key spots. Here's Buddy Bayheim, 77% at the line for one and one. Has nine, trying to reach his fifth double-figure game of the last eight, and does. Played at Brewster Academy for a prep year. It was the Central New York Player of the Year in 2017. He's had a pretty nice ACC tournament. He's got 31 points in two games, man. Uh, he's really had to step up because, again, Syracuse playing without Tyus Battle, and that changes their look on offense. Jones. 13 to shoot, and Barrett. Back for Trey Jones. Lob, and Deloria could flag it down. So with eight and a half minutes to go, a seven-point game, and that'll bring us to a timeout. Number three, Duke, or number five, Duke by seven.
Well, Zion Williamson just has a great instinct for the ball. You see him come from all the way across the court to step in front. That's not his man, but he steps in front and steals the ball and, of course, dunks it home. That's yeah. progressive. That's innovative. That's whatever you want to call it. But, Wes, he is 12 for 12 tonight. Yep. He's got 27 points. He's got 11 rebounds. He's got five steals. He's got an assist. He's got a block shot. And there's Barrett with 17 points. Duke is really happy they brought both of those guys with them tonight. 44 of the Blue Devils, 60. And at one point tonight, Williamson had outscored the Orange. 21 to 20. Well, the way he started the game. Well, I, I just had the feeling, Dan, that he was going to come out with vengeance. <laughs> right. That was a feeling you were correct. You ought to go buy a lottery ticket. <laughs> Seven point game. Dolajai in the orange. They've been able to kind of keep it with arms reach, but next couple minutes will be critical. Howard missed the runner. And another rebound for Williamson. Well, Syracuse stopped turning it over, so they stopped giving Duke easy baskets. But when Duke is able to set their defense, Duke has turned it over 16 times today. Williamson in traffic foul. That's about the only way to stop it. Foul is on Brissett, his fourth. We get a timeout in Charlotte. Back after word from your local ACC station. Williamson will be at the line. Wes, and one reason the game has sort of slowed down a little bit is Duke and Syracuse both turned it over 11 times in the first half. Syracuse only two turnovers in this half, Duke just five. And this is the only place where Zion Williamson has looked human tonight. Yep. Two of seven at the line, and the first one no good. And here's a look at the New York Life ACC tournament bracket. You see that Carolina's already advanced. And Duke's trying to create the first top four semifinal. In a long time as Williamson missed them both. It's been since 2008. In fact, it was Charlotte in 2008. And here Chuku back in for Syracuse. And actually 16 too. Nope. Three times since 95. The top four have advanced. Hanging jumper Hughes. Last time Hughes took it all the way to the basket and got it blocked. That time he pulls up and shoots the jump shot. I think that shot is available. Goldwire's played some big minutes here in the second half, Dan. With Jones, Barrett, Delaurier, Williamson. How about Trey Jones? Seven now, all in the second half. Just a 22% three-point shooter against the league. Hughes tries to answer. And Chupu and Delorier, but it's Javin Delorier the rebound. Now Jones, it may be a 22% three-point shooter, Wes, but when he makes one, it always seems to be at a critical time. He's certainly not afraid to shoot them. Yep. Barrett, here's Jones. RJ from the front. And the rebound collected, Elijah Hughes. Now you just get the idea that Syracuse, this is a critical time of the game for them. They don't want to get, let Duke get too far out in front. They won't have time to catch up. they got to score. Dolajai working against Parrott. Just tried to slip it to Chukwu, turned it over. And oh, Pascal Chukwu has fouled out. Second straight night, Chukwu, Chukwu is... Disqualified. That's just one of those wrong place, wrong time files. That, that was a that was a bad attempt to try to pass the ball inside. Chuku is not going to catch it in traffic, and it's like he's looking down the court. He doesn't even see Trey Jones. So here's Jones, who's got a seven point second half going for all of his points. Make it eight as he knocks the free throw down. Right, he may not be an accurate three-point shooter, but in conference play, he's an 84% free-throw shooter, so you like to have him on the line. Yep. And now the Orange have the work cut out for him, Wes. I agree. Can't have any empty possessions for no. sure. And right now in the second half, Dan, quite frankly, there are not that many possessions, period. 
As you noted, there have not been many turnovers. Howard, the runner with the right hand, and a foul is Jones through foul. the charge. Yep. Second on Howard. Wes, just what you were talking about, you can't have empty possessions. And Jones is just standing there waiting for him. Again, the, the Syracuse guys trying to take it too close to the basket. Jump stop, shoot a little mid-range jumper. Going timeout for the Orange. And it comes with 6.08 to play here in the ball game at Duke. Leading by 10. And let's take a look at the play of the game driven to you by Continental Top. Right, Pick one it. out. <laughs> Anyone you want. Well, Zion Williamson in the first half just dominated the game. And that's a great tip by Barrett to Reddish, or excuse me, by Reddish to Barrett. And then to Zion Williamson. He's been spectacular. Today. Yes, he has. 12 for 12 from the floor. A dozen rebounds and 27 points. Well, one of our semifinals that starts tomorrow night will be the top seed Cavaliers of Virginia and the four seed Florida State that needed overtime to beat Virginia Tech. And Dan, you got to go all the way back to the first full weekend of ACC play to find their lone meeting of the regular season. Well, and that's, I think, too long ago to make any sort of evaluation. That was the time when Florida State simply wasn't playing very well. They sort of take it off to a very slow start in league play. They weren't shooting the ball well. That is a different Florida State team now. Phil Kofer is back. Right. And so, but Virginia, you know, we talk about how well North Carolina is playing. Well, Virginia's playing as well as anybody in the country right at the moment. That ought to be a a very interesting matchup. Well, Kyle guys 29 today. Virginia just kind of mashed the gas in the final 20 minutes against NC State. I'll tell you what, the first four teams in this league have been awfully strong most of the year. Especially that comeback Leonard Hamilton's team made after a one and four start Dan. Really one of the more impressive bounce backs. Absolutely, absolutely. Right. Leonard said all along he thought his team was pretty good when they started making some shots, and he was right. Williamson scores again, 13 for 13, and now 29 points. It's another offensive rebound, so seven offensive rebounds for Zion Williamson. And when he sets himself up down there on the block, you just can't get him out. Five and a half to go. It's a 12-point game. Howard. Dolezal, reset, a three ball, it's good. That was a big basket. Only two points in the first half for O'Shea Brissett. 13 now in the ball game. And Mike Krzyzewski's telling his guys, let's slow down and set it up. Here's a steal. Hughes on the break with Howard. And a foul on Jones. That'll get Elijah Hughes some free throws. Well, the reason Mike Krzyzewski wanted his guys to slow down just a little bit was because in the first half, when they got ahead, they sort of, they, they got rushing, and they turned the ball over. Here's Zion Williamson. Nothing Dolezal's doing with that. I mean, you take two of Dolezal and put them together, and they wouldn't be the muscle that Zion Williamson has. But Syracuse was able to make their comeback by forcing two turnovers and converting in transition, and that's exactly what we saw right there. Cedar Bay into the ball game. Well, Zion Williamson is tracking tonight. A single game tournament record for field goal percentage. Only the great Carolina player Larry Miller of the late 60s was 13 of 14. Well, now that's some ACC royalty. In 1967. Hughes hit them both the lead seven. Goal wire. Here's Jones. Back for Jordan Goldwire's runner. How about the production off the bench from Jordan Goldwire with five now? Back to nine with four and a half to go. That's really a bonus to get that kind of production that sure deep is. on your bench. 424 to go. 11 to shoot, high arcing three from Howard and the rebound Barrett. 
That's with Williamson right in his face. Great job by Williamson to contest that shot without fouling. Ty's battle sitting on the bench watching. You know he'd like to be in there. Jones to Williamson. What Off for Reddish. And the three, Cam Reddish. You like the one hand bounce oh. pass? Looks like he's playing a different game out there sometimes, Wes. Bayheim. High arcing shot for Buddy Bayheim and an orange timeout. Get another look at this clinic. Right there, a little wrap into the corner. Reddish is three. It's a 10 point Duke lead. Here's a look at our Toyota game summary. For summaries of other ACC action, go to the ACC.com. And Zion Williamson's New York Life ACC tournament debut has been fairly impressive, Dan. Fairly impressive. I think you could say that. <laughs> wow. And Frank Howard, he had 15 of those 21 in the first half. So Duke has done a little bit better job against him in the second half. And Williamson, he's just been unstoppable. Anytime he's touched the ball, he's done something spectacular with it, or so it seems. So a 10 point lead for the Blue Devils. Winner gets Carolina tomorrow night in the second semi behind the Virginia Florida State game. Starts our evening at 7 tomorrow night with Tim Brando and Mike Chaminsky. And boy, the Orange Bench not happy at all with the ticket on Elijah Hughes, his third. And that's 10 on the Orange, so with 3.36 to go, two shots on every common foul. Jim, Be Jim Behan called that timeout, West to set up the pressure. Syracuse, they're down by 10. They have to do something to change the tempo of the game, to create some turnovers. Obviously, you don't want to put this guy on the line. Ten point second half for Trey Jones. I mean, they've recovered. They've got Goldwire and Jones now, Dan. Pretty uh, solid night. And Jones is only one for seven shooting threes, but I thought that three that he made was at a big point in the game. Really put Syracuse in a hole. This game was tied at 46 on the Bayhawk three with 12.51 to go. And Blue Devils are on a 28 to 16 run since. And one of the reasons is that Frank Howard has been limited yep. in his opportunities. Oh. At the other end, Barrett can't will it in. See the bay. The foul. Well, Cedar Bay has a very little chance one on one against RJ Barrett, and Barrett knew that. That was a great job to take the ball right to him, not give him a chance to block it, leave him with no option except to commit the foul. And that's what you have to do. If Syracuse is going to try to pressure you, you make them pay for it by getting the ball out, going down, and attacking the basket. So the foul on Cedar Bay was his second, and it was Barrett gets the free throw. See, and this doesn't help Syracuse, obviously, because you're trying to catch up, and if you score and they score, then uh, the time obviously is against you. 19 for Barrett, who set an ACC record with 23 games of 20 points or more this year. And he's a point away from extending that mark. Well, he's had a fabulous season. Yep. You know, it sort of gets lost in the bright light that emanates from Zion Williamson. <laughs> R.J. Barrett has not been too shabby. Bayhound will pull up on Reddish off the window for Buddy Bayhound. Okay, that's great. You scored. Now you got to get a stop. 2.49 to play. 10-point game. See, Syracuse has no choice now. They got to come out with pressure. Barrett in the corner goal wire. And all Duke needs to do is hang on to the ball. Reddish to lob and got deflected out of play. That will not be a shot attempt with 2.32 to go. He came close to getting that though, Wes. Yes, he did. <laughs> <laughs> and he's laughing about it. Well, if he catches it, it's going to be a wreck at the rack. Syracuse has to move quickly. You don't want to be crazy, but you've got to get a quick shot. Howard can't waste a lot of time. Lean in. Reset. Foul. And it's on Williamson. 
10 on Duke with 2.14 to play. So, we're staring the possibility of the 251st meeting all time between Duke and Carolina being staged here tomorrow night as Brissett hits the free throw. And six days after the last one. Well, I think when people saw the brackets come out, they were thinking that that's it for everybody who's pointing to. Yep. And the second one, no good. Williamson, the rebound. Not to mention the top four seeds advancing into the semifinal, and now a backcourt timeout taken by Trey Jones. Nine point lead for the Blue Devils, just ahead of two minutes to go. Beautiful night, Uptown Charlotte. We're down here at Fifth Street, Trade Street. Right. All right. No coming to Junior over with a word of the maintenance force on the ball game. Well, we saw this situation in last night's game. The, it's down to 23 seconds. You don't want to get a 10 second violation, so you call a timeout. And when you call the timeout, you get another 10 seconds. So right. now it won't be a 10 second violation until 13. Yep. Williamson going to throw the deep ball. Goldwire the catch. Back for Barrett. Now, Wes. That was pretty solid, too. That was ridiculous. I mean, he threw, do you know how hard it is to throw a basketball that far? And it, 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 like, it was nothing. That ball taken away, and Howard goes down in the heat. Let's take another look at uh, Zion Williamson's QB camp. Well, he, he doesn't even step into it. He throws it flat-footed and throws it basically 94 feet. And the result is a Duke basket. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, that was good. I think so. Jordan Goldwire took off when he saw Barrett leave the floor. Well, these two guys are spectacular. Yes, they are. Well, you know, you've heard all the stories about you know, being offered football scholarships, recruited for that. I mean, 6'8", 285, and 6'7", 285. And when I was asked about Zion Williamson earlier in the year, I told somebody, I said, it's just Julius Peppers in a basketball jersey. <laughs> but here's the thing. When Julius Peppers played in Carolina, he was only 245, 250. It wasn't until he got into the NFL that he added the, the, the strength and the weight to get to 275, Dan. And this kid's 10 pounds heavier than that. This kid is a remarkable athlete. No question. And he may be like 285, but it doesn't look to me like there's an ounce of fat on it. Nope. By the way, before the touchdown pass to Goldwire, we had already lined up Zion Williamson as our Chevy performance of the game. Nobody in the 66-year history of the ACC tournament has ever gone 13 for 13. Larry Miller went 13 for 14 in 1967 as Jones hits the free throw. Jones has had a big second half. Yes, he has. And an encouraging sign, I believe, if Bolden is, you know, let's say a week to 10 days. And maybe cannot go the opening weekend. Duke needs a little bit of scoring, and there's Marquise on the bench. I thought Jones got himself going by getting into the lane and shooting a little mid-range jump shot. 13 for Jones, all in the second half. Knocked away, recovered. Hughes, Howard lost it. Outlet for Goldwire, and here is Barrett. And he pulled the ripcord on that one. 82-67 with 72 seconds left. And Howard... In his final ACC tournament games, had another nice evening for Coach Bayhunt. And a foul called. Bayhunt was, Bay Bay was trying to foul. Well, R.J. Barrett's had a couple highlights here. Well, he can dunk too. But this is what happens when you pressure, when you're pressured, and you beat the pressure, you're going to get open opportunities. 
And when Duke gets the open opportunities, they're spectacular open opportunities. And Jones to the line. 13 all in the second half for Trey Jones. He's gotten himself to the free throw line. He hit some mid-range jumpers. And you know, as I said, he only hit one three, but it was at a big point in the game and really helped swing the momentum back in Duke's favor. 57 4 to go. Second one good. But you're right, Russ. It's hard to remember now that it was 46 to 46 at one point. Yep, sure was. 38 23 run. Barrett the rebound with 48 seconds left. Wow. Final half minute. Duke is going to go to 27 and 5. 43 and 19 in their ACC tournament quarterfinal history. Barrett a three. Zion gave up the shot. <laughs> I think he knows that he might be spotless. I don't think he cares. Yeah, might be right too. And they will walk it out and Duke and Carolina will meet in tomorrow night's second semifinal and Zion Williamson sets a single game ACC tournament mark by going 13 of 13 from the floor 29 points and 14 rebounds so Duke Carolina in the second semi.